Hey guys, it's me again. Um, my voice is a little hoarse, so I do apologize. Um, give me 15 seconds to talk about the band list. Staying up band, uh, warning to one, collude to three. Uh, that's really <laughs> the ones that stick out to me. I think collude to three is really cool. Uh, I think warning to one is very interesting, and singing being banned is also very interesting. Uh, Zen Mighty Band is also, again, interesting. So that's all I'm going to say about the band list. If you haven't seen it, go look it up. Um, we're not going to talk about it on here. What we are going to talk about is the deck that I've been playing. It's another budget one, so it's good for you and me. Um, and if you saw my video from last night, you know what the deck's capable of. Uh, this version that I'm playing, it's good for spamming um, beaters on the field and spamming your rank sixes. Now, this isn't the Tefnuit build that people talk about. This isn't a mix with Fire Kings, and this is not a control with Fire Dogs and Horn of the Phantomies. This is a pretty pure build. Um, your goal is to either win with Bacilla Trice, uh, Strike Bouncer, or Rekindling, or some combination of the three. Uh, Rekindling is just an extremely, extremely powerful card, and I'm really happy the ban list didn't touch it. Now, we'll go over these cards uh, in depth later, uh, especially Bacilla Trice, because he's really the reason you're making the deck. So, first thing we need to talk about when we talk about Haze Beast is the Haze Beast uh, kind of rule of thumb. Haze Beast can't be targeted by your opponent's effects. Well, Explodium, does that mean that my Haze Beast can't be hit by a bottomless trap hole? No, that's not what that means, you fucking idiot. Bottomless trap hole does not target. Now, if you're still one of those people that doesn't know that, I'm sorry, you're, you're dumb. But, what this does stop is cards like Compulsory Evacuation Device, Book of Moon, Deprison, um, Effect Veiler, anything that targets this card cannot be affected by, or any of the Haze Beasts I'm about to show you. So, this is the only Haze Beast that doesn't have that clause naturally. It can get it, but we're not even going to talk about that. So, three Haze, Fl Haze Flame, Hazy Beast, whatever you want to call it, Cerberus. He's got a six star, like all of the Haze Beasts are. He's a fire. He's got 2,000 attack and 200 defense. The 200 defense is important, of course, because it means he's summonable uh, by rekindling. And rekindling is huge in this deck. But uh, he can be normal summoned for my hand. His attack does go down to 1,000. But if he's destroyed, I can add any hazy, haze beast, whatever you want to call it, to my hand. And that includes uh, spell and trap cards that are themed. So he's, uh, he's a great card early. And he's really what you're uh, what you're trying to achieve early in the game, and just really good. Next is Haze Flame, Haze Beast, Perryton. Now this guy is really your bread and butter with Cerberus. You can uh, search obviously for this guy from Cerberus. Uh, he's a six star, 1600 attack, 1700 defense. So you know his effects got to be pretty good, and it is. Uh, when he's on the field, you can activate it once per turn. Send a fire monster from your hand to the graveyard and tribute this card and special summon two Haze Beasts from your deck. Sets up all of your rank six plays. Just consistently good. Lets you pick and choose what you want to get from your deck. And again, this card can't be Valored, so just keep that, or uh, for that matter, it can't be uh, Phoenix Chain. So keep that in mind. You're pretty safe if you get past the, uh, the Solid Morning and the Bottomless Trap Hole. And a lot of people forget about that clause, so they don't plan for it. They'll flip over their compulse, and if you're a dick, you can make them compulse their own monster, but, uh, you know, you can just be like, no, that actually doesn't work. Now, this guy, he has an effect, but we really don't care about it, and it's such a bad effect, it's such a not important effect, I'm not even going to tell you what it is. So, it's got six stars, fire, it's a hazy flame, 2100 attack, 200 defense. This is pretty much our filler. Um, you'll pitch him for Perryton plays, you'll special summon him off Perryton just to overlay, and you can special summon him with Rekindling. He's just filling a spot in the deck that needs to be filled by someone. He's got good stats, um, and he fills every role that we really need him to. Next is Manticore. Manticore, 2200 attack, 300 defense, so he's not summonable by Rekindling, but he does have the effect that um, if he's going to be destroyed, or actually, it's not if he can he's gonna be destroyed, he can do this at any time. You can tribute from your side of the field, or uh, your hand, a fire monster, and he can't be destroyed by anything. So, your opponent does a torrential, you send a, you know, a Cerberus from your hand to the graveyard, and this guy is safe. Um, other builds run more of these. My build, 
Uh, again, we're trying to get to those rank sixes as fast as possible. He's not really the best for that, so we're only running one because he is still a good card, just not 100% best for this deck. Level Lance Lord, 2100 attack, 200 defense, rekindling target, and he can be normal summoned um, with that 2100 attack. So he's a powerful beater. Um, when he's normal summoned this way without a tribute, uh, he gets sent to the graveyard during the end phase, and then you can return a remove from play fire monster, so he's good in that sense. But mainly, you just want to be able to drop uh, a, a level 6 at any point of the game without uh, tribute and uh, rekindling target. So we are running 2. Now, Goku the Pirate Mal Malice, I'm running 1 of him, and he really has great synergy with Hazy Flame Cerberus. Say you start with a Hazy Flame Cerberus, you normal summon him, summon him his attack goes down to 0. Goku's effect, if I have a fire monster on the field, I can special summon him. Now his effect then requires you to destroy one fire monster on the field. So you can destroy himself, which you obviously don't want to do, or you can destroy your Cerberus, which you do want to do. Destroy that Cerberus, Cerberus goes to the graveyard, you get his effect to search your deck for a Haze Flame, uh, excuse me, Haze Beast card, and then you have your Goku out there in the field. He has some other bullshit effect where he special summons tokens and he can make himself more powerful, but. You really want to just proc Cerberus' effect, and it's good to have another 2200 beater out there. You can definitely run anywhere from probably 0 to 2. I would never run 3 of them, but, you know, some people like them, and I'm one of those people. Ugh, excuse me. Now, this is as, for monsters, this is as Fire King as I get. I'm running 1 Garenix, and it's purely tech. Typically, what will happen is I'll pitch him for a Perryton effect, he'll go to the graveyard, and then if I call right with Sphinx... Why haven't we talked about Sphinx? Where is he? Oh, he's the next card. Okay, if I call him right with this card called Sphinx, which we'll talk about in a second, I can special summon him from the graveyard. Or if I use the Salt of the Fire Kings, another card we'll talk about in a second, um, he destroys himself in the end phase with that effect, and when he's destroyed, during the next standby phase he comes back, and he destroys all the monsters on the field. So he's a good uh, kind of card to go into if you're it's kind of your oh shit button if you can pull it off uh, if even if you can't you can special summon him off of Sphinx plays so uh, we'll now talk about Sphinx and why he's important now this card when I first saw him I was very underwhelmed I thought he was dumb had a dumb effect 1900 attack 1900 defense so he can't be rekindling not really a big beat stick so you know why is he good well once per turn you can declare monster spell or trap you mill your top card and if it's correct his effect kicks in, and you can special summon from your hand or graveyard one fire monster. Now, of course, again, I said I can get my Garenix with that effect. But how do you know what you're going to mill? Well, there's no way to possibly know unless you're playing one of those cards that lets you uh, put cards in any order to, at the top of your deck, or if you uh, are playing Convulsion of Nature where it flips it over, or if you have a level chain. So, aside from that, you have to know the ratio of your deck. My particular deck runs 15 monsters, 15 spells, and 10 traps. Now, this means that, you know, I have an equal chance between spells and, tra or spells and monsters um, to, to draw them, and then a little less of a chance for traps. So, you have to look at what's on your field, what's in your graveyard, what's in your hand to know what most likely is the next card. Say I have five monsters either on my field, in my graveyard, or in my hand two spell cards, and one trap. The odds say the next card is probably going to be a spell card. So I call spells with Hazy's Fate, Flame Sphinx, mill that card, lo and behold, it's MST, and now get the special summon um, for my hand or graveyard. So you have to know how to use this card. If you don't know your ratios, don't even know how many cards are in your deck, I wouldn't even run this guy. Um, I would definitely never run him at three, regardless. So, good card. We're going to run him at two. You can su special summon off Perryton. So I'll usually go Hippogriffo and Sphinx, and then try to call off Sphinx to see if I can extend my play. Uh, Hazy Pillar is a huge cornerstone of the deck. Uh, you do have to run three in this particular build because um, you're not running Fire Dog, you're not running Balrong. You don't have any normal summonable uh, level fours. You have your three Cerberus, your two Lance Lords, and then that's it. So you do need to get Hazy Pillar out there to make your Perry Perryton plays more viable. Um, so we are running three of them. He makes all Haze Beasts require one less tribute. But you can also, uh, once per turn, take a Haze Beast on the field and attach it to an XYZ as a material. So that's kind of cool. I've done it maybe two or three times since I've started playing the deck. 
Next is Assault of the Fire Kings. So you're running three of this card as well. This card pretty much, uh, if your opponent has a monster and you don't, again, we're only running 15 monsters, so that's very possible. Uh, you can activate this, you special summon that monster from the deck. Um, its effects are negated and it's destroyed during the end phase. So this can pretty much hit any one of our monsters in the deck. So I play this, I special summon my Cerberus, um, I end, Cerberus dies, gets a search. Or I special summon the Garenix, the Fire King Garenix, Garenix dies, wipes the field next standby. But mainly what you're going to do is you're going to special summon a level 6, then you're going to normal summon a level 6 or a parry 10 to make a play, and then you go into a rank 6 XYZ, and that's why it's an important card and a cornerstone. Uh, you could probably get away with running 2, but um, I've been testing 3 and it's been okay. Now, rarely will you ever see me run 3 of 1 spell card, 3 of another, then 3 of a third. Um, it's very rare. I don't think I've ever done it before, and I just feel dirty doing it this way, and I really want to cut one from one of these first three, but I haven't decided which one yet. I am running three rekindlings just because it's such a game ender. For example, say I have, you know, a Cerberus in the graveyard, um, a Lance Lord in the graveyard, and I just overlaid a Sphinx and a Hippogriffo in my graveyard, okay? So I then overlay them into a Bacilla tries. My opponent you know, he doesn't want to deal with Basilitrice, so he slow mornings it. Okay, this is now in the graveyard. I now have that Hippogriffo in the graveyard. I play Rekindling, I get my Hippogriffo, my Cerberus, and my Lancelord, and I attack for game. You know, and things like that happen. Again, watch my video from last night. You'll see me get huge Rekindling plays early in the duel. You have to be able to pull off Rekindling plays. You have to know how to set up your graveyard if you have it live at the beginning of the duel. Um, and it's just really broken card. I'm surprised that the balance didn't even touch it. Um, I think it's, it's going to be seeing a lot of play um, in the next, uh, next few months. So, running three. And again, three haze pillars, three onslaughts, and three uh, rekindlings. It's it's a lot, but I think it's necessary. Then we get very staply from here. Don't need to talk about any of that. Now, with my trap lamp, I will talk about Call of the Haunted. Run this over Hazy Glory. Hazy Glory is a trap card. Let me I think I have it in here actually. Hazy Glory is a trap card, a themed trap card for the Haze Beast. Do I have it? That's more of the Phantom Beast. Sorry, I know this is very unprofessional of me, but y'all can deal with it, right? Here it is, Hazy Glory. Um, it serves the same purpose as Haze Pillar. Um, makes your monsters require one less tribute. You can also send it to the graveyard to retrieve a Haze Beast, but Call of the Haunting just is better, guys, so I really wouldn't run this. You have to wait a turn to get the summoning uh, the summoning cost uh, fix, so I would just bypass it altogether. And then I'm on like this kick right now where I'm like, liking to run one of each like really powerful trap. So one Mirror Force, one Torrential, one Fiendish, one Compulse, one Solemn, and one Solemn Judgment. Solemn Warning uh, did get hit to one, so it's good to start practicing now if you can. So let's go backwards through the deck as per usual, and I will go over the extra deck and then we will be done. I know I make my videos long, guys, but I really like you to know why I'm playing things and the ins and outs of these cards that are new that you're not otherwise going to really get to know unless you play the deck yourself or have someone like me tell you. Now, am I 100% right all the time? Absolutely not, but I do take this game seriously. Um, and if you want to see this exact build in play, just watch my video that I put up last night. Now, again, your main win conditions are going to be Basilitrice and Strike Bouncer. Uh, we are going to run three Basilitrice. Uh, he requires two level six fire monsters. Once per turn, I can remove uh, one of its materials to uh, or detach to remove one monster on my opponent's side of the field or graveyard. Uh, this is an answer to Zen Mains, Maestroke, um, Gachi Gachi, uh, Stardust Dragon, uh, anything really, you know. Your opponent has a Graph in the graveyard and it just keeps coming back here because the Graph will get rid of the problem. This is, that's incredibly good. Now, if you add, you know, if you have three, you can, you can have five materials attached to this thing. And if you get three, um, his attack goes up by 200 for each material. Um, if you get four, he can't be targeted by card effects, and if you get five, he can't be destroyed by card effects. 
So if you get five on here, he becomes a huge beater that can't be targeted, can't be destroyed. So it's really good. But really, what you're going to be doing is just removing uh, monsters with them. That's at least that's how I use them. I don't. I think maybe once or twice I've gotten them with three materials, but never five. Um, two strike bouncers. Uh, once per turn, you can negate the activation of effect of a monster. Deal 1,000 points to its controller. It doesn't destroy, which I really hate. But he does have a 2,700 body, and it can lock down your opponent if uh, need be. Obligatory Exa Beetle and obligatory Gaia Drake. Gaia Dragon. And this is actually a force focus. It's a level six. It's the camera with 2,800 attack. It's the highest attack uh, rank six. So we're gonna get one of him in the mail tomorrow, I think. And then I have right here I have a bunch of the rank fours that I was using and some just staples uh, from whenever I, I was using some other cards. So really you could get away with this deck. You get away with running three Bacilla Trice and three Strike Bouncer, I think. Everything else is just kind of flavor. And obviously there's not a huge roster of uh, rank sixes yet. So pick and choose as you go. Again, 95% of the time I'm going to Bacilla Trice or Bouncer. And that's the deck, guys. I know I did a lot of talking, and it wasn't as entertaining as it might normally be, but I tried to get as much information in the video as I could. So I uh, hope you guys appreciate me for that, and have a good one.